excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. It is a great, gloomy, but at least somewhat warm winter day here as we head into the beginning of 2023 on this gray, gloomy day. Probably will not see the sun for at least another week here in upstate New York, baby. And, uh, what is it? Is it Tuesday, January 3rd, 2022? So, uh, I wasn't going to do this rant, but now that how many of you have asked me to comment on that uh, 60 Minutes segment, which I guess was Sunday night, if 60 Minutes, is it still coming out on Sunday night? Uh, and I have to say, guys, I, I'm a little bit embarrassed to, to be doing this, uh, to admitting this, but hell yeah. Two thumbs up, three cheers, kudos to the mainstream media. As obviously anybody listening to my uh, my interview on Soft White Underbelly would claim that I am a left-wing media brainwashed clueless moron for recommending and cheering on the, I guess it was just under 15 minutes Sunday night, perhaps the most spot-on 15-minute analysis of what is going on on this planet that I have ever seen on the mainstream media. Uh, so there you go. Uh, you don't have to go digging around here in the doomosphere anymore. This is what uh, my buddy Elliot Jacobson was referring to on his interview, that it used to be, uh, you know, trying to find some intelligent commentary on the state of this planet, just until a few years ago, uh, was, the, the, you know, the hardest thing about running a Doomer channel. Now it is on 60 minutes, uh, so I guess uh, it's a good thing that this is fake news that, you know, all the clueless moron Trump tards uh, looking at this, calling this fake news. 60 minutes spelling out how doomed we are. Uh, how doomed we and every other species we share this planet with are doomed because of us. Uh, obviously, guys, I cannot run the uh, video here because I don't want a copyright strike. I'll put the link on here in case you uh, have been living under a rock and have not seen the greatest 15 minutes of... Uh, I guess it was 13 minutes of me of mainstream media history. I strongly encourage uh, you to go watch it. Uh, I don't know how you comment on uh, 60 minute segments, but anyway, let's just give a little uh, a little just a brief because on the uh, I'm going to send you the link. And this link from CBS News, it, it has a link to the video itself and then has a transcript of the video below it. I was glad to see uh, at least two people on here are people I have interviewed myself on Collapse Chronicles. It has 3.5 uh, thousand comments. How many? The 60 Minutes has 3.5 thousand comments. And Three and a half. You mean my, you're talking about my, my, my interview on Soft White Underbelly has more comments than the 60 Minutes? Oh, my God. Uh, Jesus. Boy, this really, the fact that there are only three and a half. It's been up a day. Is, is it three and a half million or three and a half thousand? They've got 533,000 views in a day and 3.5 thousand comments. 
Well, okay. So I guess there is a way to comment. So Sandy's reporting to me. I, 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 I unbelievable that. I, and, and my guess is that seventy-five percent of the comments are from clueless morons uh, who don't want to listen to it. Uh, okay, so I'm I'm just going to read the opening paragraph. And then I'm going to read the interview with Paul Ehrlich. Uh, Paul Ehrlich was the very first, uh, well, not just interview, but the very first video I ever had on Collapse Chronicles. May I read the that? reason I, the reason I created this channel, uh, was the Paul Ehrlich interview. But we're going to get to Paul in a minute. I so, just want to read this. Okay, I'm not coming on camera. Oh, Sassy, come photo no, bomb. I'm in my pajamas. Sassy dragon. I yell at every human to stop breeding, but they won't. I've never had a kid. I can't tell you how glad I am that I never did. People have got to stop themselves from making more people, no matter what they personally desire. Take care of the kids who are already here. Um... If you keep making more people, then people who are here will continue to be utterly miserable and it's not getting better. Folks, that was Sassy Dragon. That's Ariel. So 25 she... 25 minutes ago on... Yeah, that's what she wrote. On to the on CBS site? Yes. All right, good for you, Ariel. Yes. All right, that was one of our... Uh, and you might be surprised. Doomer chicks down here. You may be surprised. Okay. So anyway, this is how... Uh, again, I strongly advise you to go listen, but this is how... 60 Minutes is on the first day of 2023. I uh, explained it to the clueless moron normies who have no interest in hearing one word of it. <clears throat> in what year will the human population grow too large for the Earth to sustain? The answer is about 1970 according to research by the World Wildlife Fund, who, of course, you, you, you know, the right-wing Alex Jones crowd would call the World Wildlife Fund one of the architects of the New World Order's depopulation agenda. The answer is about 1970. Uh, in 1970, the planet's three and a half billion people were sustainable. But on this New Year's Day 2023, the population is 8 billion. Today, wild plants and animals are running out of places to live. The scientists you are about to meet say the Earth is suffering a crisis of mass extinction on a scale unseen since the dinosaurs. We are going to show you a possible solution, which I do not understand because kudos to CBS News, they never showed a solution possible or impossible. We're going to show you a possible solution, huh? But first, have a look at how humanity is already suffering from the vanishing wild. And uh, I am a little unclear what they're talking about. I think that possible solution is that they spent about 30 seconds uh, and they were interviewing a fellow that I've also interviewed here on Collapse Chronicles, one of my very last interviews a uh, fellow named Gerardo Ceballos who was talking about this unadulterated horse shit 30% save 30% of the planet since there's no way we're going to save 100% let's just try to save 30% so he, he said that and immediately uh, well, well we'll quote Gerardo before we leave, what he has to say about the solution being saving 30% of a planet. But we're going to jump ahead to their interview with my hero, Paul Ehrlich. 
Paul Ehrlich says too many people, too much consumption and growth media. At the age of 90, biologist Paul Ehrlich may have lived long enough to see some of his dire prophecies come true. So then the quoting uh, Paul, humanity is not sustainable. To maintain our lifestyle, yours and mine, basically, for the entire planet, you would need five more Earths. Not clear where they're going to come from. And then the reporter, Scott Pelle, just in terms, you know, asking Paul, just in terms of the resources that would be required, Paul answers, resources that would be required, the systems that support our lives, which, of course, are the biodiversity that we're wiping out. Humanity is very busily sitting on a limb that we're sawing off. <clears throat> In 1968, Ehrlich, a biology professor at Stanford, be became a doomsday celebrity with a bestseller forecasting the collapse of nature. Then we get, so the reporter Scott Pelle asked Paul, when the population bomb came out, you were described as an alarmist. <clears throat> the, uh, the alarm Ehrlich sounded in 1968 warned that overpopulation would trigger widespread famine. He was wrong about that. The Green Revolution fed the world. But he also wrote in 1968 that heat from greenhouse gases would melt polar ice and humanity would overwhelm the wild. Today, humans have taken over 70% of the planet and 70% of the fresh water. Uh, and I'm unsure uh, why they took... Okay, okay, and this is what uh, Paul Ehrlich has to say about being described as an alarmist back in 1968, and he is still being described as an alarmist at 90. Paul Ehrlich, quote, I was alarmed. I am still alarmed. All of my colleagues are alarmed. The rate of extinction is extraordinarily high now and getting higher all the time. Uh, and then they move from uh, interviewing Paul to uh, interviewing biologist Tony Barnosky and his wife uh, weighing in on this. And then they uh, interview Gerardo Ceballos. Uh, as I say, you can find here on Collapse Chronicles my interview with him. Mexican ecologist Gerardo Ceballos is one of the world's leading scientists on extinction. He told us the only solution is to save the one-third of the earth that remains wild. And so they talk about that unadulterated uh, horseshit uh, is... Uh, playing out uh, okay uh, so here we are later in the interview with Gerardo quote all the big success that we have in protecting forests and recovering animals like tigers in India 
Jaguars in Mexico, blah, 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 are incredible, amazing successes, but they, meaning these tiny little snippets of success, I was just talking about this in my rant uh, last night, that you are going to see that the mainstream media is going to be playing up these tiny little snippets of, quote, success. You know, usually, like Gerardo is saying, if there's a really a big concerted effort to protect one critically endangered species in one small area of the planet, that is what is going to be called a success story from here on out. Uh, and this is Gerardo talking about the very thing uh, I was mentioning last night. But they, meaning these, you know, the, these tiny little few and far between success stories, but they are like grains of sand on a beach. To really make a big impact, we need to scale this up 10,000 times. They are important because they give us... Huh, they are important because they give us... Huh, huh, they give us... Huh, they give us, uh, they give us, uh, 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 hope, but they are completely insufficient to cope with climate change. And I'm sorry he, he mentioned climate change right here and not uh, every other uh, problem. Uh, <clears throat> so let's, uh, oh, then they go back to, uh, they finish up, I guess, with, no, they go back to Paul Ehrlich, Scott asking Paul, you know that there is no political will to do any of the things that you are recommending. And Paul Ehrlich says, quote, I know there is no political will to do any of the things that I am concerned with, which is exactly why I and the vast majority of my colleagues think we have had it, that the next few decades will be the end of the kind of civilization we are used to. Uh, close quote. Uh, in the 50 years since Ehrlich's population bomb, humanity's feasting on resources has tripled. We are already consuming 175% of what the earth can regenerate and consider half of, human, half of humanity, about 4 billion people, live on less than $10 a day. But they aspire to cars, air conditioning, and a rich diet. There you go. Uh, that is exactly and so, wrapping this up, uh, the, the print version of this story, the five mass extinctions of the ancient past were caused by natural calamities, volcanoes, and an asteroid. Today, if the science is right, humanity may have to survive a sixth mass extinction in a world of its own making. Hallelujah! The mainstream media talking about uh, game over.
game over and already the uh, the denialists are out there. This clueless fucking moron, excuse my language, named Michael Schellenberger. This evil piece of garbage is already out there. Michael Schellenberger, if you're not aware of, uh, of that cretin's name, uh, talking about how every one of those people uh, th that 60 Minutes interviewed completely full, full of shit. And Paul Ehrlich, Gerardo Ceballos, all the rest, uh, complete clueless morons. The planet is just fine. And this is the reason I, I, I have to admit, guys, even I, uh, you know, when, when you get down here in the doomosphere, and the more you withdraw from normies, you, you tend to uh, forget how absolutely despised uh, doomers are. I mean, Paul Ehrlich, who makes it clear that he does not consider himself a doomer. Paul Ehrlich is a huge fan of, uh, of keeping global industrial civilization going for as long as we can. Paul Ehrlich makes no apology for defending global, well, maybe not the industrial part, but uh, most people would consider Paul Ehrlich a doomer. But, you know, when you get down here and you forget what the rest of the world thinks about us, it really took reading the comments to my interview and Elliot Jacobson's over there on Soft White Underbelly to, to understand just truly uh, how the clueless morons uh, are running the world. And this is the clueless morons on the right and the left. Once again, it has nothing to do with political affiliation. Nothing. Nothing. You're a clueless moron, Normie, or you're not. And the problem is, is that maybe 1% of the planet is not uh, a clueless moron. But anyway, three cheers for uh, CBS News for having the balls to put out the bravest 13 minutes of mainstream media uh, information I might have ever heard, and uh, I would like to see more of this, but uh, anyway, shut me up and go listen to yourself. I have to finish, figure out how to comment and leave my own comment along with Ariel's. And with that, I have to head off to the bank and figure out why they have canceled my ATM card while I still can. Bye, guys.